What's up, guys? Welcome back to the NS Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Reno Run. So Reno Run's an app that's on our phone here that is allowing us to be able to order material to the job site. Think of like Uber Eats almost. Um, we were spending so much time sending someone to the store in the middle of the day, which is a two-hour ordeal anyway, never mind the time it takes to ramp down and ramp back up into work. We were just spending an enormous amount of time. And if you use an app like this, now you're effectively allowing production to maintain on the job site while someone else is picking the order, bringing it straight to your job site. I hear they may even have some free coffee. If you guys do want uh, free delivery, which even makes it more enticing, sign up for the pro subscription. Um, gives you free deliveries and returns for $1.99 a month. If you have one person doing more than five trips a month, that's enough to be worth it. Today, I want to talk about our project in Rhode Island. So a few of you guys have reached out and asked, you know, why are we doing something out of state? You know, I've talked about this on a previous podcast about what our goal is as a company as we continue to grow. I'd love to build all over the country. Um, there is obviously an enormous complexity behind that. Um, and Rhode Island's actually not that far away. We're only about 45 minutes from the job site. Uh, so it's not too far um, but it's just far enough where we can start kind of dabbling into other markets and figuring out how we're going to find that stride with maybe taking this, you know, around the country. But I posted something on my Instagram uh, today and, you know, or I guess when you guys are listening to it, it might have been days ago, but asking how many days were between the first and last slide of uh, that post and one of them was an excavator demolishing the existing house and the other one there was an excavator backfilling inside the foundation prepping for our concrete slab I'm going to answer how many days that was at the very end um, and well, I'll tell you I'll tell you then but I want to talk about what we've been working on and why you know you know why it, it's taken as long as it has and some of you may say it's short some of you some of you may think it is extremely long but this home, there's a lot of things that we are taking into consideration. Number one, we're using and partnering with rock wool insulation on this project. Um, and we're using all mineral wool, the comfort board on the exterior of the home, comfort bat, and all of the cavities. A lot of you guys have asked, well, why aren't we using foam? Simply put, the client didn't want to use any petroleum or foam-based products. And, you know, everyone has their opinion on foam. We tend to steer away from it. We just think that there are healthier alternatives out there. Um, and there will probably be an argument that there's healthier alternatives than mineral wool, which I wouldn't disagree with. Um, however, in this case, we're looking to avoid the use of foam or petroleum-based products. So we are using the, the uh, rock wool comfort board on the outside of the foundation we're also using it under the slab of the basement we're going to be actually running that all the way up the outside of the sheathing on the house and the sheathing on the roof um, specifically we have one layer on the outside of the found the concrete foundation wall that goes all the way up to the sill and then on, then on the exterior of the home we have two layers of three inch so we have six inches of exterior insulation that are on the wall and as well as the roof. So you can kind of think of it as a big blanket that goes all the way around the house uh, and then underneath the concrete slab as well. The, you know, we keep talking about passive house and we've decided on this project as of right now and it, uh, at this point we're probably too far to consider certification, um, but we're building to a passive level construction. Uh, so we're looking for really super airtight, really super airtight. That's that's really super airtight. Let's make that the hashtag for this build. Um, it's going to be super airtight, and there, it's going to be it's going to require some really uh, intense detailing. Uh, we're working with uh, shown windows on this project, so they're they're manufacturing custom windows, all, all European style. Uh, we're going to be partnering with a WRB manufacturer to make sure that we're using a cohesive system. Uh, but let's talk about that exterior wall assembly just a little bit. We are dealing with a wood frame wall. We're gonna have two layers of exterior insulation on that wood frame, exterior of that uh, wood frame wall. Um, but I'm, I wanna kinda go in from the inside. So obviously we have our wall board and paint. We have a two by six stud. We have half inch sheathing. And then we have our air layer. So this is gonna be our control layer where everything is air, watertight, airtight. Um, and then we have our insulation that's gonna go on top of that. So I forget who it was specifically, um, but we look at that air layer as basically 
the uh, windbreaker of you know a coat. It's it's stopping the air from infiltrating into the home, uh, and then that ex- and then that exterior insulation is more of like a blanket. That's not going to be a good air barrier. You know, wind can really you know effectively drive through, refine the crevices. So, but it's a blanket. It's a it's a sweater. So when wind is not driving at the house, you know, it's keeping the house warm or cool in the summer. We have two layers of that, and we're considering installing it really with um, these long screws. And as we're installing it, the those first two layers, we're going to try to basically minimize the amount of screws that we install uh, through the installation. Basically, just get it tacked up on the wall, because then we're going to actually install another layer of half-inch plywood. Now, that half-inch plywood, you know, uh, is really there for the siding. You know. If we were doing something like a clapboard or a board and patten or a vertical board, we could do a strapping type of uh, a strapping layer um, and then essentially have the siding kind of float above that. But we're not doing that here. We're actually doing a white cedar shingle siding. So we need that continuous, um, you know, uh, that, that continuous sheathing for the shingles. Now we could do a bunch of horizontal strapping, but really in in my opinion you'd have to install vertical and then horizontal for the drainage and you're just using an enormous amount of material plywood just makes a lot more sense so for us we're installing half inch plywood on top of that and we're going to be using long um long i believe it's eight inch uh or longer screws i forget the exact length of them through the plywood into the stud uh on the uh the wood frame wall so you're going through the the six inches of exterior insulation into the stud now one thing that we've really considered and and, and been talking a lot about is we don't want to crush the rock wool insulation it's considered semi-rigid insulation so it's not rigid foam where you don't get a lot of compression you do get some compression um, and we don't want to create waviness in the wall if there is a slight waviness I'm going to say that it's quote-unquote okay because the cedar shingle will hide a lot of it but we do want a flat wall. We don't want to be installing something that is super wavy, so we need to be really cautious of that. We've kicked around ideas of using, you know, um, pieces of PVC that were, you know, exactly six inches tall or five and three quarters tall, and putting them behind each screw. But we know how difficult that would be to basically get this, you know, piece of PVC behind the the plywood, push through the rock wall. There's all these things. We actually came up with some uh, products recently that may be able to help us with this. Uh, we'll share those in a future site visit, um, you know, when we are on site and installing it. Um, and then on top of that, we don't need an air barrier, but we do need a weather barrier. So we're going to be using, um, you know, a less expensive weather barrier underneath the shingles, as well as a um, like a cedar breather or some sort of rain screen to allow the cedar shingles to dry on both sides. Um, Talking, I'm talking a little bit about the future, uh, but I started this podcast talking about, you know, or at least alluding to the fact that I want to talk about what we've been working on, um, and that's you know kind of going back to that you know with the exterior insulation that is something that we've talked a lot about on this foundation, but more so we've really just worked on we've been really working on careful communication with between our trades or I'm sorry careful coordination between all the trades that are setting this project up. There's a lot of time in design. It's a it's a small house, but it's a very complex house. The foundation has really particular elevation heights. There's really particular elevation when it comes to the sewer. You guys had a ton of great questions and comments on why we brought the sewer underneath the foundation versus you know bringing it through the wall and using the injector pump. Um, you guys had great great concerns with uh, or questions about the backflow backflow preventer. Um, all of these things. This is why we we use social media because we want to share what we're doing, but also learn about what we're doing. And if you know someone's ever re- dealt with an issue, we can address that, or you know at least have the opportunity to question it before we get too far down the road. Um, but you know the foundation really had a lot of detail that had to be thought through. We I posted this video on TikTok about you know the bolts for the steel and how we use the surveyor. And the surveyor, I mean. This is his job. They do it every every day. They're, they're constantly locating things. Um, but a lot of you guys on TikTok, and I think I got to take TikTok for uh, for what it is. But you know, a lot of people had said that it was it was silly or stupid, or I think they used some other kind, colorful w- words. But we wanted to make sure that we were setting these things because it was 
structurally the best way to go about it um and we were going to eliminate the risk of say drilling into the rebar that was in these footings uh and going back and drilling them after and it really didn't take much um more effort to get a template cut and drop those things in place and yes some of them were slightly askew but we went back and tested all of the the steel uh, plates for the the or the steel leveling plates everything fit great uh, and prep for the steel but we can now when the steel guys get on site we're not having to slow them down they can drop their steel in place knowing that it's exactly where it needs to be and we can be off to the races the other thing about this home is underneath the garage has uh, quote unquote living space typically your garage is frost walls with slab on grade here that's not what the, the homeowner wanted she wanted a workshop and the workshop is actually underneath the garage so we're doing a slab on metal deck which is pretty typical in commercial construction um, and that's actually going to be outside of the the quote-unquote passive level uh, envelope um, but it will be insulated and it will have temperature control and it has a killer window out the back so when you are in the workshop when you turn and look out you can actually see the water uh, there in East Providence, which is pretty amazing uh, considering how low you are on the job or how low you are on the site uh, and where you are in the home. Uh, and then when you get up to that first floor, when we ha start having those corner, uh, mitered corner glass units, uh, you're going to have some pretty incredible views. But make sure you st stick around. Um, stay tuned with uh, the site visits on a weekly basis. Doug reminded me, I haven't told you how many days. Uh, 93 days. So from the time we demoed the house to the time we backfilled, we had 93 days. Now that's not working days. That is calendar days. Um, we had a handful of days where we hit ledge. Um, I think we had a little over a week of hammering between you know the different times that we had. Uh, we had hit hit ledge, which ultimately delayed you know some of our other trades. So we had, we also had a, a ton of rain event um, that delayed the project. But the answer is 93 days. Uh, I'm going to he head back over to Instagram. If someone hasn't uh, guessed 93 yet, the first person put 93 in those comments. I'm going to pin it. We're going to send you a t-shirt. Um, shoot me a DM. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll DM you. I'll get your address and we'll shoot you a t-shirt. Talk to you guys next week. This podcast is brought to you by Reno Run. So Reno Run's an app that's on our phone here that is allowing us to be able to order material to the job site. Think of like uber eats almost um we were spending so much time sending someone to the store in the middle of the day which is a two-hour ordeal anyway never mind the time it takes to ramp down and ramp back up into work we were just spending an enormous amount of time and if you use an app like this now you're effectively allowing production to maintain on the job site while someone else is picking the order bringing it straight to your job site i hear they may even have some free coffee if you guys do want uh, free delivery, which even makes it more enticing. Sign up for the pro subscription. Um, gives you free deliveries and returns for $1.99 a month. If you have one person doing more than five trips a month, that's enough to be worth it.